Hello and welcome back to another episode of Surreal Garage. Hope everybody's doing okay. Today we're going to cover some hints and tips on welding sheet metal, the fin stuff, without distortion and blowing through, and what to do in case you do blow through when you are welding this stuff. So this is the same thickness as car panel, usually floats it around 1 to 1.2 mil depending on what you're going to put in. And the number one rule is don't let it get hot, which is hard to do when you're melting steel together. But these are ways to reduce the heat and make it work for you. Okay, so we're going to pretend that this is original steel on the car. This is new steel. When you're designing your, pad, uh, your patch to go into the other one, one of the things you want to do which will help with heat transfer is the shape of the patch. If you are putting it... So if you are doing it in a shape like that, you're better off not doing it in a shape like that. Don't have any hard edges. Instead of a square, keep your, your patch going and curve it around. It helps with heat transfer. If you try and weld on a dead point on a new piece, so there, you're going to melt that whole corner away. So when you're doing it, if you're doing it on a square hole, round, don't have any actual corners if you can help it. If you do have corners and you can't help it, right on the corner to start with, don't heat the panel up and then try and get to it because the more you work it and closer you get to that corner, the more chance it's going to blow out. Another thing to keep in mind when you're doing it is if you were doing this and you only had this much panel left on the car, just get rid of it and replace that whole panel to this point here. Try and give yourself as, as evenly spaced as possible between the parent steel and the patch you're putting in. So if you were replacing it down to something like that, if you could, Either give yourself some room up here so you're uh, not leaving too little of an area to weld to. The thinner that or the narrower that starts getting, the more susceptible to warping it's going to become. Same as when you put a new patch in. If you're going to put in a new patch and you're only going to chuck it in and it's very narrow like that, the new patch is going to warp as well. One of the next things you want to do when you're putting on the designing the patch and cutting it to shape is. Uh, actual fitment of it so you don't want them to butt up hard against each other because when they do heat up it's got to go somewhere so what the metal is going to do is start to roll like that when it does start to expand when it gets hot metal expands leave yourself a bit of a gap don't leave yourself too big of a gap or you're going to be having issues bridging it I'll show you how to bridge that gap only if you can actually get behind the panel other than that you're, you're in no man's land you're better off starting a new panel so there's some of the uh, things on prepping your panel to put it in, shape-wise. Some of the ways once you've got it prepped, that you can hold it together. It's these little panel clamps. So they just a little tab that goes through, pulls tight when you do that, and it pulls them flush against that bottom there. The good thing about these is that there is the perfect gap you want between your patch and repair. So these only work if you can get back behind them afterwards to get them back out. So you can use these as often as you want. Luckily I have my beautiful wife holding the camera this time. Last time I tried doing this, my hands did not like holding a camera and juggling this. So you can put these as, as often as you need. This is just for demonstration, so I'm not gonna be doing anything to absolute perfection here. And as you can see, it gives you a nice join and a nice gap so when it does start to get a bit warm your metal isn't going to run into each other and start to roll over now you can get panel prep pliers that 
put that edge on it so expand the view your panel will look like that after you use them and you weld there but the problem with those is they're still going to be the same problem you've just gave it a little bit of release but if you're still giving it hard up it's still going to roll in you're still going to end up with a dip so another thing you can do as well is clicos you can click your panel together with a set of jogging pliers, you can give yourself a tab. So these pliers here, they're a punch and jog, so you can see that step in it there is the same thickness as your material. Is that picking that up? Mm -hmm. So you can put a little step in it, you just put these all the way through like so, squeeze it, it'll form a little step. Let's do, do one now. Squeeze it, forms that little step. And you can just leave yourself a little tab that you can either drill and put a Clico in or the other thing with these, spin the head on them. You now got a hole that you can spot weld through. And then once you're done putting your panel in past that step, you literally just cut the tab off and butt weld it. So that's, that's one method there. Another method is these magnets. These are called neodymium magnets. They're just little panel magnets. They can be your best friend or your worst enemy because they can be quite annoying with how strong they are. And you can, and they will hold the panel flat. The problem with these is when you are welding with these, especially when you're TIG welding, this one we're covering MIG, but when you do TIG weld with these, if you try to scratch up your arc too close to this magnet, the magnet will draw your arc into it and it won't actually go into the metal. So the, your, your arc is magnetised, so the magnets will suck it in and you won't get proper penetration on your metal. Now another thing to do with fitment of your panel as well is, I'll pop this one out of the way, give you the demo of what you don't want to do. So if you've got a piece of metal in and it's sitting like that in a relaxed state, there's a big step between the two. Don't just push that up and weld it and then try and push this down and weld it The tension that's in this is going to make this one meet it halfway and you're going to end up with dips and warps You want this to be as close to that shape as you can put the extra couple of minutes it takes to get that Sitting nicely without tension instead of trying to force it in because as I said if you you're trying to weld something like that The minute it relaxes it's going to buckle so get that to the same shape as that as best you can before you do it. It'll save you in 15 minutes of cleaning back welds and, and then trying to work a dip out with a hammer and dolly and shrinking metal back. If you do that, you won't be hanging around and, and stuff like that. The tension won't be pulling on both forces. So after you've got this in and ready to go, uh, a couple of things you can do if you, you've got access to the back of the panel is... Some aluminium blocks, copper blocks, some non-ferrous blocks you can use as heat sinks. You've got one, you just a bit of copper plate. Thicker than the material you're using is always going to be best, something that'll absorb the heat. So what these do is you put this onto the metal, you put it onto the back side there, you're almost guaranteed you'll never blow through. So if you just line it up, so your seam is going to be directly above it. Now the good thing about this non-ferrous metal is your welding rod won't stick to it, it won't penetrate it. It absorbs the heat too quick for this to actually penetrate, it just doesn't work, they have different rates. So when you're doing that you can spot weld on that and that will take the heat out of your panel. What you want to do is try and keep your panel at a temperature where you can always touch it with your hand without it being too hot. So say you, you weld there and then you move, so you just tack that together blow it down with an air gun, jump over here. Tack there, blow it down with an air gun, jump over here. Tack here, blow it down with an air gun, keep jumping around. Don't be afraid to mark your panel up in stages. It just keeps you, keeps you knowing where you're at. So you go band there, band there, band there. And then you've got one, two, three, one, two, three. Just keep following the pattern. So tack, let it cool, move, tack, let it cool, move, tack, let it cool, move. And if you're doing that with these aluminium blocks, copper things if you're just spot welding. Another tool that I've got is this bit of solid copper rod. I've just domed one side, concaved the other. So that works when you're doing all different shapes of panels and you can spot it. As long as you can get behind, do the same thing as the aluminium. Hold it against it, weld to it, 
that won't take in weld material. Another thing you can use for heatsink is the aluminium blocks. If you can't get to the back of them, you can still use them as a heatsink. You put them close to the weld and hold it there. And then weld, they'll still draw it out of that metal. And then another product which I don't see a lot of people showing off is this stuff. JVAC Weld Cool. JVAC's the brand, but it's heat absorption putty. And it is specifically designed for this. So when you're doing this fin gauge stuff, it's sort of like play-doh with polymer in it of some sort and you just stick it beside your weld this stuff's reusable it's non-hazardous so you don't have to be scared of it you do your weld and this will suck it up same as that so once you're done with it it'll dry this will dry out as you go so if you are going to go weld move weld move weld move just keep testing how moist that is if it starts to dry out you just add a bit of water to it all you got to do is keep this moist you can keep reusing this stuff moist <laughs> Moist. <laughs> That's staying in. <laughs> all right, where are we? So after all of that, panel prep is also a really good one to focus on. If you've got a lot of rust or paint and crap like that, you've got to try and weld through. You're going to heat it up more than you need to. So what I use fix those. These two, they're not as abrasive as a flap disc or a grinding disc. This one is a silicon carbide, it's a coarse disc. Wear safety glasses with this because it does throw chunks of this crap off and it's painful. And this one is a poly flap disc. Similar to a flap disc but it's almost like a scouring pad. So it doesn't remove the steel as much as it will just the stuff on the surface of it. And like everything when you are prepping your panel and cleaning it up, if you introduce friction you're introducing heat. Keep your heat to a minimum, including cleaning. So don't just sit there for ages, spinning up on one spot and working your way along because the panel's going to get hot, it's going to get warped before you even get a chance to get into it. You'll be thinning that edge out. So do a bit here when you notice it's getting warm, come clean a bit over here when it gets warm, come clean a bit back here, come clean a bit back here until it's clean and then just give it a run over. So another product after you've done with that to remove any residue is the brake clean. Now you've all probably heard this all before. You have to have non-chlorinated brake clean. If you don't get non-chlorinated brake clean, the tetrachlorine, whatever the, the name of that substance is that does make it chlorinated, uh, will heat up potentially cause or create phosphine gas, which could kill you. Don't ever assume that it's not uh, don't, don't ever assume that it's a non-chlorinated brake clean unless you can read the words non-chlorinated on it. Alternatively, acetone. Just use straight acetone. This is good stuff. It'll clean the panel, it'll clean a lot of the crap off, it'll clean off paint residues that you can't quite get. It'll give you a really good clean surface. Literally just on a rag. Roll over. Now with acetone, it just got into one of my cuts, it stings like a bitch. With acetone, it is highly flammable. Don't put it, don't start to weld on a panel that you've just rubbed down. Let it evaporate first. If it's still wet, it can cause big fiber. That's another thing you don't want. Uh, deburring, your panel is also good. But those little tabs aren't going to work too well. When you try and weld to them, if you're thinking they're going to hold up, they won't. And then as far as welding goes, so the reason I've written parent steel and new panel on this is just to differentiate the two. So we're going to pretend that this is part of a car. Now this, we don't know what this is. This could have been hammered to shit. It could have been stretched. It's, it'll be worn. It's definitely going to be most of the time thinner than the new steel you're putting in. If you're building to the same gauge it was done to originally, this will be worn down. This will have had paint and everything taken off it and like I said these pads don't aren't super abrasive to this stuff but they will still remove material so when you are welding you want to start on your new steel your new steel is probably always going to be more heavier gauge than that regardless start on your new steel and then bring your, your tack across to this so you're not hovering around on this for too long these are actually, a lot of the time, the older steel, if you're working on an older car, the, 
the actual tensile strength of this steel is less so it does warp easier than a lot of the newer stuff so always start on your new bring it across if you do find that you're blowing through and you end up with a blowout on it don't hang around there trying to fill that blowout while it's and just getting it hotter and hotter and hotter all it's going to do is give give you less to actually play to and you're just going to keep chasing it you'll be on an, an endless pursuit chasing that blowout to get rid of it stop as soon as it blows out stop come back to it if you do that there'll be metal there you can play with and if you can get behind it i'll show you later what to do when your gap's too big or you've got a blowout you can use these to fix that problem but if you are already using these on the back side of it you won't get that problem you'll be doing uh, doing well to end up with that problem if you are doing that method uh, one other thing you can do if your gap is quite large is you can get a bit of rod, TIG rod or MIG wire out of your gun and you can put it, you can hold it in there and you can actually weld to that. So this is the same as if you were going to do it anyway but if you can put that in there and you can actually weld to it. Can you see that side? Mm -hmm. So you can actually weld over that and bridge that gap if it is too large. So the gap that you would preferably want in that butt joint is about a millimeter, which is what this is. You can space that out if you've got bits of scrap, you can just bend them at a 90 degree even. And just sit it in there, butt it up, and you can use that to space them and weld. So another thing to keep in mind when you are doing this, most of the time you're probably going to be doing this on a vehicle, is if you're working on something like a rocket panel and you can't get to the back side after you've welded it, treat it before you weld it. So you can buy copper and zinc based weld through primers, coat the back of your repair patch and as much as possible on the back side of it, even if you've got to paint it on because once you do weld that in and enclose it, you can't get back to it later which is the uh, the good thing about running these Clecos and those little tab idea I was talking about, is it's a way of holding it in place. Sorry to interrupt, but you look like you've got zombie fingers. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I'm a worker. <laughs> so treat the bag of the steel first, and then you don't have to worry about it coming back because you, you're taking rust out. You don't want it to come back. You want to do the job and have it last. So treat the back of it now. Also, if you are welding directly to the car, make sure that there is no battery connected. Disconnect the battery first. If you don't disconnect the battery, the amperage or machine will run through the car, especially if you're going to start welding up rock sliders and stuff. I believe I've said it before in one of my other videos. It will destroy the battery. You'll kill the cells in the battery. You'll drop the cells and it will just stop holding charge. So what I'll do now is I'll flick on the welding machine and we'll just show you a couple of run 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 and then what I'll do is I'll deliberately have a gap too big and show you how you can use aluminium blocks to bridge that gap where possible which is why it's pretty important to take your time on a lot of this practice on scrap until you you're confident enough to go and attack a car with it you're not going to do any damage or harm practicing on scrap Always keep your welder at a, at a low setting. A lot of the time the welder will suggest what you want to do. As long as you know what you're playing with, there'll be a, a preset setting on the welder. And then you just tweak it from there. Mine is analog. I've got more settings on the inside of it there. But for me, I just run at a amperage of 1 and a wire speed of 2 on my machine. I couldn't tell you exactly what that equates to. It's pretty simple. I've got all my burn back controls and everything in the unit. I don't need them when I'm doing this. I just... Listen to what the welder is doing and it'll tell me what it needs, if it needs more wire speed, needs less wire speed, and so on. Another thing that is good about having these on the back side of your weld where you can, is when you've got your argon flowing at your tip, your argon isn't completely shielding the weld on the back side there. So if, if you've got that there, it stops the atmosphere from getting to your weld as well. So that's another pleasure of having that bit there.
So we've just welded this, as you can see. I can sit here and touch that with my hand. It's uh, demonstrative welds. You can clean them off. I'm not putting too much effort into this. So I just take it here. So I ran the aluminium blocks. They take the heat out. I can literally touch that, not a problem. And I've just, just ran welds down. And as you can see, you can pick up on that. They're still nice and flat. So I can pull these out. Still nice and flat that way. And this is exactly what I was saying. These tend to stick. And get the body from here. And it's still flat in that direction. So that's the goal we want. If we keep doing that and going bang, 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 bang over and over again, then you will end up with an outcome where you won't have any warping in this panel at all. If you run everything in one hit, you run an aluminium block on the backside, staging your welds, run and heat core, clean panel, you do the lock all in one. I'd be very surprised if you got any deflection in this at all. And then comes back to the same thing again, when you are cleaning back that weld, you do want to not focus on just smashing that with the grinder. You'll clean a bit here, clean a bit here, clean a bit here. If you do start doing welds like this, <coughs> and you do notice the heat starting to shrink the metal. Stop. Get a little hammer and a dolly. And just tap the weld. Clean the weld back, tap the weld. It'll relax it back again, and you can keep going. Now, I'll do a quick demo on what happens if the gap is too big. So as you can see, if you're ever running at a gap like that, I'd honestly just say start again. That's, that's a massive gap. That is 5mm gap there. So you'd never actually want to try and weld that in real life. So um, I'll show you that coming here. That gap, too big. I've never actually tried to bridge a gap that big before doing this method, so I don't want to do it now and have it fail in front of everybody. That'd be embarrassing. Oh, there. We've still got a good three or four mil there. Still, once again, too big. That's four mil. But I'll show you what you can do with these little aluminium blocks. So as you can see, that bridge that didn't heat it up because the aluminium would have taken the heat out of it. So I'm, I'm that confident on it after literally just doing it. I'll take my gloves off. You can all see my disgusting zombie hands again. So it's nice and cold, and that's a pretty pretty solid bridge to try and jump. Now when I undo this, that'll just free straight up the aluminium. You get a little score there, but didn't even try to penetrate. And that is a good solid weld. So that is, that's holding. So there's a trick on how to do it. You can do the same thing if you've got little pinholes like this. So say you've got some old trim holes or something you want to weld up. Same trick. That's where this little tool comes in handy, working on doors and guards. I literally just put that behind there. And I don't have to build a little plug for that and try and weld that in. I can put that behind there and just weld straight over the top of that and fill that in. I can spot my way along this. Um, say if I'm welding tightly and I do blow out and I end up with a big hole like that, stop straight away, come back to it, let it cool down, don't let the metal go crazy, and just behind it and go. So in the real world, if you ever tried to weld bridge, bridge something like that, it's just not happening. Little aluminium block changes it completely. That's the end of the hints and tips that I've got for you now. Um, if you've got any that you'd like to If you've got any that you'd like to throw my way, hints that you didn't see here, let me know. Sorry.
<laughs> Let me know. Uh, comment anything that you found interesting or you've learnt yourself. I would, I'm curious to see how, how, if anything, this has helped anybody. And what I'd like to start doing with this channel is at least once a month do a how-to video showing something like this, uh, as well as projects that I'm working on at the moment. And I'm thinking at the moment, even towards the start of the week, pull out, put out an episode showing either a project or a how-to and towards the end of the week dropping just a little introduction to a tool video so something like the jogging pliers just do a rundown on how these can be used doing fabrication especially in automotive uh clicos stuff like that just just little how to, uh, introduction to tool videos and just do the usual if you're, if you're enjoying this let me stop that Sorry. what are you doing if you like what you've seen and you like what the channel is sort of doing, like, subscribe, comment, uh, turn on the notifications, share with your friends. We're going to try and keep this a regular thing, at least one video a week, be it a how-to, an update on a project, an introduction to a project, or an introduction to a tool that you may or may not have seen. I mean, I'm deburring things the very time I first saw these. I sound like the world's biggest idiot. I had no idea how the hell you use them. This was many years ago, I looked at that and went, how the hell does that deburr something? Thinking it was like some kind of spinny tool, but it's it's not, it's literally just put it on and drag off the edge. And I felt like a massive idiot after I learned how to use this. I thought, wow, that's all it is. So hopefully that helps you guys develop some skill. And maybe you've got yourself in a bind and you just didn't realize you could use aluminium as a bridging plate or whatever. But hopefully you enjoyed it. See you on the next episode.